This video is for the analysis of aspirin, formal lab report for AP Chemistry. So I wanna go through some of the things that need to show up in your report, show you some sample calculations, and hopefully, once we finish, you'll have a better idea of how to do this lab on the analysis of aspirin. If you do have questions afterwards, be sure to contact me and I can help you with your individual results. So the first thing that we always have with formal lab that is a title page. So don't forget your title page is a singular page. That page by itself has the title of the lab, analysis of aspirin, the instructor's name, my name, the school, Gateway High School, your name and the date that it was submitted. Following that on your next page is the introduction. Introduction, I would generally suggest that when you have labs of multiple purposes, that your introduction should have multiple parts. Just to break it apart, just makes it easier to read, easier to follow for the person uh, that is doing so. And so first thing you'll see that I did is I put the analysis of aspirin through back titration, have my purpose of the lab, my procedure. Remember that with these procedures, very different from, an, from uh, our labs in honors chemistry where we had a one to two sentence summary. You gotta remember that when we're doing our procedures, this is writing a procedure as if I don't have the procedure in front of me except your lab. It's not going to be a step-by-step -step set of instructions, so it's not going to tell me, uh, ma uh, first, take the mass of this. Second, do this, then do that. So not using those command forms, but what this should do is this should give me the direction I need to do it on my own. And so if your first step was to, to take the mass of the tablet, you might say, mass the aspirin tablet. Then you, uh, you might say something like, the. Uh, let me re restate that. You might say something like, the mass of the aspirin tablet was taken. The tablet was then placed into a 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, and crushed with a stirring rod. The tablet was then, uh, to the tablet was added uh, whatever number of milliliters of whatever molar hydrochloric acid along with three to five drops of phenolphthalein. So what you're doing is you're essentially telling me what you did, but not giving me instructions on how to do it myself. Also be sure in this section of the lab that you do not give me any results of your testing. Just tell me what you, uh, the way that the lab is to be followed. So essentially how the lab was done, not how to do it. So you're not gonna give me those instructions. Uh, this lab itself, I got this uh, at a teacher workshop. So uh, comes from a collaboration of people. So there's no reason to put a place for it. Uh, I actually don't have one. So. Uh, nothing for us to write as to where we got this procedure. Uh, next one here are the chemical reactions. Keep in mind there are several reactions to this lab. Uh, you have the lab itself that is uploaded. Also, there is one online. Uh, if I can think about it, there is an acid base titration. There is a reaction with sodium hydroxide. There is a back titration. So keep in mind that I can think of at least three on my own uh, reactions that I remember seeing when we did this titration. And so, yeah, I do remember the reaction with the uh, sodium hydroxide. I remember it being heated and then the hydrochloric acid back titration. So I can remember three of them off the top of my head. Please don't feel that you can't copy and paste pictures of those titrations. Uh, feel free to use any of those documents that I uploaded that have pictures of the lab. Uh, if they are in molecular form as well, that works. They're just a lot nicer if they are in, uh, in organic structural form because that's really the way that uh, a person might understand these a lot better, especially uh, since those structures mean a lot more than the molecular formulas. To find any experimental procedures, so you might want to think about titrations and back titrations. Those kinds of things you might want to think about. <clears throat> Anything else that we did throughout this lab that was a specific experimental procedure. Any laws, theories, principal concepts that this is based off of. Don't forget about things like endpoints and equivalence points. Those are very important. Uh, so those theories, concepts, laws, whatever it is, principles that we discussed when talking about a titration. If you need help with that definitely feel free to ask. Next one is the spectrophotometric analysis of aspirin. We have a purpose for that as well, and a procedure that we followed. Again, this procedure comes from 
same place, so uh, not a name to address or to give credit to. Uh, we have the chemical reactions that were in place for this. This lab is up, uh, uploaded, and so uh, I noticed, actually I have these in the pre-lab uh, PDF, I'm sorry, the Word file, there are, there's a reaction when we heated it with the sodium hydroxide in it, and then there was a reaction when we added our iron buffer solution. So I see two of them that I can think of. So we had two reactions for this. Define those experimental procedures. Remember, we're doing spectrophotometry, so you might want to define that. Remember spectrophotometry and the law, Beer's Law, that it was built off of, and any other procedures, uh, concepts, theories, and principles that you think may apply. Ferric chloride purity test this should probably be our shortest portion. No laws here, but remember the statement that we had about phenols versus esters, the concept here. So the purpose of this with those three test tubes, how you, how you actually went through and uh, performed this procedure, any reactions to this, were there any reactions? If not, that's okay as well. Uh, maybe there were not, or maybe there were. And then finally, what is this based off of? And we talked about that. Finally, uh, we get to the last few portions. So we had our title page. Our introduction feel free to stop the video at any point if you need to write things down no reason that you can't do that but I'm sure that you already know that we have some data tables each data table needs a descriptive title uh, as far as I can see there are three sets of data first is that data table for the uh, analysis of aspirin through back titration that analysis of, act of aspirin through uh, back titration the only two things I noticed that needed to be added to that table or at least come from that table or the uh, percent error and relative error. Those weren't on the table, but they are things you will need to calculate. We had that data table. We have the same one, another data. So, and, and also don't feel bad if sometimes we have to take our data and break it into two tables. Sometimes there's a summary table that might have the average, the actual percent error and relative error. Because remember, a data table should not be on two pages. It shouldn't split two pages. You shouldn't have to be going back and forth for a data table. So sometimes what we do is when the data table gets really, really long, maybe longer than, a data, than one page, then we start to break that table up. So maybe we stop it after the milligrams of aspirin found experimentally, and then the next one becomes a summary table where we get our, our uh, average actual percent error and relative error. Then we had our spectrophotometric analysis. This is where we had those solutions, A through E and the unknown. We had the concentration, the absorbance. So there was a data table there where you collected the absorbance. Underneath it, it you had three other pieces of data, the amount of aspirin and the unknown, the accepted value and the percent error. So keep that in mind because that also will need to be submitted as well as the data for the, spec for the ferric chloride purity test. This will all be qualitative, so the observations that you made. Calculations was our next section of the lab. Really, I'm just going to kind of walk my way through this. More than likely, this is where you will need to do some pausing to do your own calculations. I took one group. This is not the gate group. This is just randomly selecting some people in the class. And what I did was I said, first, make sure to show that calculations of your plus or minus. Remember that you can always take that from the sample lab and just insert that here because they're all done the same way. Now, for your purposes, what I did is I included the calculations for my plus minus because I know that sometimes that becomes a little bit challenging. So uh, you need sometimes it's good to see what someone found when uh, when they were doing similar data. So I have that in here. Uh, volume, the first one for the back titration for trial. And remember, I'm showing a specific trial. Uh, for this person, it's for trial one. You could show me whatever trial that is. Volume titrated was final minus initial. In this case, their final volume was 19.44. The burette is plus or minus 0 0.05 milliliters minus the initial of 1.36, plus or minus 0 0.05 milliliters. Now, when I subtract the two of those, I got 18.08, and then my plus or minus, this is an addition or subtraction, so two times 0 0.05 squared, and the square root of that was 0 0.07, and we'll all get that same value when we do our volume titrated. Second calculation was the moles after the equivalence point. Remember, you added a volume, and so in this case, they actually added, uh, as it shows here, 18.08 uh, milliliters. Well, then after that, there was an additional amount of NaOH added. That's what this is. This is the moles added after the equivalence point. So 
The volume was that volume of NaOH added after the equivalence point. Should be your number in the data table right underneath that volume titrated. So how do we did that? N equals M times V, where again, I showed you what that V was equal to in terms of where it comes from the data table. See my calculation here, the molarity of the NaOH was 0 0.10152, uh, and then the un uncertainty there with that. You'll see their volume uh, that was added after the equivalence point with the uncertainty of the burette. Went through and we got their moles, and you can see how I found those, uh, how the uncertainty associated with those moles of NaOH added. And so this is the NaOH added after it turned pink. So what I got past the equivalence point. Then I heated it, I let it cool, and I titrated it, back titrated it, with HCl. How much did I add? Volume final minus initial. You can see my numbers there, 15.69, plus or minus 0 0.05, minus 0 0.62, plus or minus 0 0.05. You can see I found the uncertainty of that, and I found that volume titrated. I next found the moles the same way, M times V. My molarity of HCl was 0 0.1026, plus or minus 0 0.0005 and then multiplied that by the volume of HCl that was titrated. Did that, you can see my calculations to find the moles of HCl added to react with the NaOH that did not react when heated. So this is looking at how much excess NaOH there was. So then how much of the NaOH actually reacted? Well, I took the total number of moles after the equivalence point. This is number two and I subtracted the moles of HCl. This is number four. And so when I take the moles of NaOH minus the moles of HCl, I got 0 0.00181 plus or minus 0 0.00001 moles. So that was my moles of NaOH that weren't there because they were neutralized during the heating or reacted during that heating process. And so you can see how I found that. You can see the numbers that I got. You can see the calculation for that uncertainty. You can match those up to where they come from uh, in the problem itself. Moles of aspirin, if you looked at our reaction, you would find that way at the end, the moles of the NaOH reacted uh, is equal to, and we kind of have to go back from the reaction, there was this moles of this negative one substance uh, you know, like this, uh, the structure with a COO minus and an OH off of it. Well, that was equal to the initial product of our acid base titration with the NaOH, which is equal to the concentration of, of the moles of the aspirin. It's a one to one to one ratio. So the moles of aspirin are equal to the moles of NaOH. That's a nice easy one. So you'll find those two are the same number. How do I find the milligrams of aspirin? I take the moles of aspirin times the molar mass of 180 of aspirin. That's acetyl salicylic acid. And so you'll see that I took this here. I got 0.325 in grams. That's 325 milligrams. You'll see as we go down how I found my plus minus to make that two milligrams. So for their data, they had three trials. They had 325, 353, and 351. Each of those were found to be plus or minus two. Now remember when we're, this is where we often will see some errors and that is with calculating an, a, uh, an average. So the first thing you do to calculate an average is you do an addition. So when I take 325, 353, and 351, that comes out to 1029. Now, however, all of those numbers have an uncertainty with it. So you'll see off to the left here, I found the uncertainty in the addition as three milligrams. So my 1029 is plus or minus three. 1029 is then divided by three, so now it's my addition of my division and multiplication rules. And so you'll see me do that off to the side. That's where I took that 340, it says 349. It's actually 343, sorry about that. A little mistake in my number there. You won't understand where I got that from. So that's where the, the 343 comes from the average. And so that 343 times three over 129 squared was one. And so my average value was 343 plus or minus one milligram. From that, I found a relative error, taking the absolute error, the one, over the average measurement, and that was 343 to give me 0.3%. And then the percent error was the average, 343, minus the actual. In their case, it was 325. I'm not sure what yours is, uh, but that you'll see that there. Well, it's a very common number. 
all over 325 times 100. Well, 343 minus 325, that's 0 0.18, so two sig figs for an answer. We did this also in class, spectrophotometric analysis. So the first thing you find is the concentration of the standard. So this would be, so when we looked at our data table, it says A through E and then the unknown in one column. In the last column, it says absorbance. And then in the middle, it says concentration milligram per liter. So this was the concentration calculations, how we got each of those numbers to fill in that chart. And so what we did is we took 400 milligrams per 250 milliliters. We multiplied that by the volume of the, of the concentrated solution. We set that equal to the concentration of the diluted solution times the total volume of that diluted solution. And so that 400 milligrams for every 0 0.250 liters. I changed it from milliliters to liters because the units in the chart were milligrams per liter. Times five, that was the five milliliter pipette. Remember we used the five, a four, a three, two, and a one. That's what it would be used to find that concentration. That equals X times 100. M1V1 equals M2V2. I solved, I got 80, that was my solution A, and then you should have gotten solution B, C, D, and E, and done those calculations as well. The only thing that changes in those is the five, remember, goes to a four, a three, a two, and a one, and then that will change those concentrations in the middle column. How do I get my unknown concentration? So underneath letter E, there's a concentration of the unknown. Well, I used my Y equals MX plus B. If you remember the uh, we're going to do include a graph. I didn't I gotta write that on here. Uh, we're going to include a calibration curve. So we need a calibration curve for our aspirin sample. We did that online. Remember, we showed that at the end of the lab. And so from that straight line calibration curve of our Y value <coughs> and the X, if I remember right, as I did that, the Y must have been the absorbance and X was the concentration. And so our graph being, uh, and it needs to have a proper title. If you remember, we did this. Title of the graph was the calibration curve of acetyl salicylic acid, not absorbance versus concentration. Remember, these are uh, generally in chemistry, the graphs have descriptive titles, not just Y versus X. So we set up that graph. We got a Y equals MX plus B, also an R squared value. So from the Y equals MX plus B, I solve for X, the concentration in milligrams per liter. From that value, I was able to use the M1V1 equals M2V2 expression to find the amount of aspirin in the unknown. M is the concentration in the 250 milliliter solution. This is what I'm solving for. V was five milliliters. That was the five milliliter pipette. And then it went from there, our M1 and then V. That's our M2 and V2. The M was that calculation two that we calculated in D. I'm sorry, the V was 100. When I solve that, I'll get the concentration of the aspirin in the 250 milliliter volumetric flask. Ooh, that's a mouthful. Multiplied by the volume of that volumetric flask. And so we'll take that milligram per liter, multiplied by 0.25. It'll give me the milligrams of aspirin. When I take the milligrams of aspirin that I got, minus what was on the bottle, all over what was on the bottle times 100, I'll get my percent error. Also, don't forget, I should put number five here. You will need to include the calibration curve. Got to include the graph for the lap. In the discussion, restate the purpose of each part. There are three parts. What was the purpose of each part? Summary of the procedure for each part. Remember, we're not going to be as extensive here. So a lot of vagueness in this, just kind of giving a very brief overview of what was done. Uh, nothing here to, um, to worry about being specific, just kind of an overview of what was done. You know, the, you know, a aspirin tablet was, uh, if I can remember right, it was dissolved in, uh, uh, trying to remember our procedure. We took the aspirin tablet, you dissolved it, and let's just say it was ethanol, you don't have the procedure in front of me, uh, added phenolphthalein, titrated it until it went from colorless to pink, uh, added excess NaOH twice, uh, the amount that was titrated plus 15 milliliters, heated it, uh, and then you know you would heat it, cool it, and back titrated it with HCl until it went from pink to clear and colorless. You know, for example, that's you know a summary of procedure. Next, you're going to tell me what you got. 
And so that is the milligrams of aspirin for trial one, two, three, the average actual percent error relative error, uh, and comparing the percent error to the relative error for your back titration. For your spectrophotometry, your milligrams of aspirin experimental, actual, and your percent error. No plus minus values that we're using with these. Tell me the results of the ferric chloride purity test. Then finally, you have your error analysis. Give me two errors for the back titration, two for the spectrophotometry, four total errors. What errors were made? How did those specifically affect your results? If you had, let's see, in their case, I believe they had high results. Yes, high results. So consider high errors. And so when you think about it, you have to kind of work your way backwards and think, well, where does that come from? Hmm. And, and start the mind kind of triggering things. You know, the moles of aspirin comes from the moles of NEOH. And so uh, what would cause there to be too many moles of NEOH? And so start kind of thinking of some of those things. I don't want to feed you uh, every answer to these. You know, before I keep giving you a lot of the errors, uh, I'd really like to get to the point where you're coming up with a lot of those on your own. And so two errors for why you have either what appears to be too much aspirin or too little aspirin in your tablet. Finally, two modifications for the entire lab for future experimentation. And so while you'll have four total errors, how you uh, how they affect your results, how they can be minimized, there will be two ways to improve the lab. I would suggest doing one for your back titration and one for your uh, spectrophotometric analysis. And that's it. You know, if this the lab were to be done again, what would you do differently? So now that you've done it, were there things that seemed like they could have gone better if you did maybe this or if you did that? Kind of some critical thinking. Well, that's it. If you have any questions, definitely ask. I think I've covered everything for our lab on the analysis of aspirin.